Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming and more Lies of P. With the release of this very fun Souls-like, although it is somewhat of a reskin Bloodborne, I am really, really enjoying it. But I have noticed a lot of little details that just aren't mentioned in game or even properly that would be really useful to know. Things that will make the gameplay smoother or better, tips that you can use in combat that are seemingly unexplained but are worth knowing. So I hope this video can be a spoiler-free help for your own playthrough, so let's begin. This first one is a funny one. I had no idea you could do this. It's not been explained to me at any point. I've not seen any mention of it. So yeah, um, you can jump in this game by sprinting and pressing the left stick in on a controller. It might be different if you're playing on PC, for example. You can, in fact, do a jump and it is this little kind of measly hop, reminding me of, say, when they introduced this kind of mechanic in Dark Souls 1, 2, 3, a little tiny hop that you can use to make jumps and traverse around the world. Of course, it's nothing major, but not being able to do it versus being able to do it is a difference. I did hope that you'd be able to do an attack from the jump, like be able to do a leaping plunge attack or something like that, but no, its purpose is pretty much traversal as you go around the world, jumping from little gap to gap if you need to do that. For our second thing to know though, it's more to do with mini bosses and how they don't seem to respawn. Mini bosses just means the stronger, more unique enemies you come across, like this hulking dude protecting this chest, or the big patrollers that maybe reward you with a weapon like this one, dropping his baton after you defeat him. These fights are noticeably more difficult than your average enemies and honestly I've had a harder time with some of these mini bosses compared to the real bosses because their attacks are just less telegraphed by comparison. Fortunately the moment you kill them they don't seem to come back even if you go to a stargazer aka a bonfire and reset the enemies. This means if you come across a mini boss you should absolutely be going all out meaning using all your heals if you need to, your fable arts, the legion arm gauge, whatever. Once it's dead it's dead so there's no reason to not go all out every time. Having said that, what if you don't really have the option to go all out? Meaning you've already been exploring for a while, you've used all your heals, you're low on resources, and now you've got an enemy or enemies that you really don't want to fight and you really want to just keep progressing to the next Stargazer. To die at this point would suck because you've made a lot of progress and then you'll be sent all the way back to the Stargazer and have to fight all the enemies again if you do die. The tip here then is that you can actually outrun enemies. They will literally reset to their original patrol point if you go too far away. And it's not that far, although it can be a bit scary to run blindly through new areas as ambushes occur and more enemies aggro to you. What this means though is you can rush to the next bonfire or open up that next shortcut, ignoring enemies when needed. If enemies do follow you near the stargazer you're looking for though, it will unfortunately stop you from using it, but it's fine. If you just keep going beyond that point until the enemies that are on you do reset, then you can go to the stargazer and use it. You know, maybe it's better to instead of fight that mini boss with no heals, just let it reset. Maybe you aggro some normal enemies in the process, but they're a lot easier to deal with by comparison. Next up, I want to mention your healing vials. At first, you just have three, but as you progress the game, you'll start to increase how many you get to carry. However, it doesn't really matter how many you have. At some point, you will just run out of them. It seems when you run out, you can actually generate new healing vials by dealing damage through combat. The display over the heal at the bottom left will begin filling up as you deal damage and kill enemies, which when filled fully will generate another heal. So if you're totally out of heals and really do need need one, try to land those hits on enemies as much as you can. Try to target the weaker and easier enemies to land killing blows to net you that heal restore as soon as possible. Now I'm not sure if the game ever told me about this mechanic, I'm pretty sure it didn't, it's just something I've realised in my own gameplay, so I figured I'd better mention it. Next up, I want to talk about the traps. These strange contraptions of half puppet, half cage trap things will trigger when you interact with them. These ones are the electric ones, but there are going to be different types in the game. When I trigger these ones though, an AoE lightning explosion happens which you do not want to get hit by but it also continues to spread that status of electricity around the starting explosion for a little while then eventually clearing. This can be used to your great advantage in a fight. They seem to put them in tougher or tighter spots to try to trap you, often near a mini boss. But if you trigger them intentionally and draw enemies into that explosion and the damage over time effect post the explosion can actually be really strong. You can trigger them with a melee attack or by rolling through it. You just want to make sure you get out of there before the explosion hits you. But of course it's going to be safer to use a ranged attack of some kind, like a throwing item or maybe your harpoon arm, whatever works. But yeah, they deal great damage, especially to enemies that are going to stand in the effect for a little while. They can make some mini bosses or multi-enemy sections 
much easier when you take advantage of this. Speaking of statuses then, I want to highlight a weird detail that I swear isn't explained. Status effects can mess you up sure, but also enemies depending on their weaknesses. But did you know these normally negative statuses actually have some positive aspects? It's only three specific statuses though. In this example we see the electric shock building up and affecting me, meaning I take more physical and electric damage which sucks. But it also increases the amount of stagger I seem to do during attacks. Like you're a juiced up puppet after all. Overheat the burn is pretty rough, burning you over time, reducing your heat healing via your guarded attacks, but apparently enemies also have slower natural healing when near you, which is minor but helpful. And lastly, there's decay, which damages your weapon durability, sure, but surprisingly, it will also increase the damage type, the destruction damage, while afflicted. So there can be some perks with having these negative statuses on yourself. Of course, it's not ideal, it means you're taking damage and taking other negatives, but it is interesting to know that there are some perks to this system when affected by certain statuses. Here's a quick tip that's never explained for obvious reasons. You can back stab enemies mid-fight easily. Yeah, just walk up behind them and go for a fatal strike. They do explain this by having you walk up slowly behind enemies and going for a sort of assassination style backstab, but I do mean mid-fight. It's an old trick that's been exploited since early as Dark Souls 1, Demon Souls even. It works on any humanoid enemy you can fight, including the boss fights where it's a humanoid, such as the second boss fight of the game. These attacks will give you nice breathing room, the free damage they deal, and after fatal attacks in general, enemies sort of fall down and have to get up, which leaves them exposed to more attacks while they're getting up, like a charged heavy or something else. Next up, here's some quickfire guarding tips. Blocking is simply much easier than dodging, even if dodging stops all damage, but blocking results in chip damage that you need to quickly heal. Some enemies are basically meant to be blocked. The perfect example of that will be the really agile enemies that are the dogs here. They jump around and move around, and just like any Souls game, they can be quite a pain in the butt, and since you're dodging and moving around yourself, you end up putting yourself out of range of even hitting them when you're dodging. So blocking is often the better pick, because as you can see after they attack, they have kind of a recovery post block which leaves them exposed and actually makes them really really easy to deal with all this jumping around that it's doing is not a problem i just wait for it to hit me and then punish it when you're exploring the game and going through new areas it can be a great idea to move and block at the same time there's nothing stopping you from doing this it allows you to turn a corner and just check for an ambush especially in some tight alleyways where they do this to you and then you can reduce the damage and not really be punished for the ambush nearly as much as normal now in a full souls game you could sprint and block at the same time it's very disappointing that they don't allow this in this game it just feels like one of those little things that makes the game a little bit more shallow in terms of mechanics but still blocking moving is a thing you can do in terms of perfect guarding we can use that to break enemy weapons to reduce incoming damage of course but i want to warn you that some enemies their weapons will break even though you perfect guarded them it's just that some mini bosses are stronger enemy types their weapons take a few perfect guards before they actually break they are still breakable and that will still reduce the damage they do which is still nice against a mini boss in regards to the guarding heal that occurs after you land a guard, you can actually increase how much healing that gives you. By leveling one of your main stats, Vitality, you can see what it actually increases by the blue that's marking each stat. And one of them is Guard Regain, which actually goes up as you level this. Now, it's not by a massive amount, but you're starting Vitality to say 20 or 30, it will go up to a noticeable amount, and that healing gets pretty potent. Honestly, I would always recommend in a new Souls like or Souls game in general, that you level your health stat first, and get it to a nice point where you can tank a few hits even from a boss or mini boss because it makes learning the game and exploring way less punishing. Outside of blocking, you can also use sprinting to evade attacks or full sprinting attacks called running attacks like running light or running heavy. Just like a true Souls game, running attacks are super strong. You're essentially doing a moving attack, moving into range to hit the enemy while they can't even react because you weren't in melee until the last moment because they'll start to wind up their own retaliation attack while you're finishing yours. And then you can use a block or perfect guard or even evade to completely avoid the attack. It's a very strong way to open a fight when you're just exploring or mid-fight because you can run out of range of their incoming attack and then run back in with a running punish. Honestly, just running away and out of range of attacks in this game is very safe and very strong, especially when you're dealing with the unique attacks called fury attacks, which you can't actually dodge or normally block, have to perfect guard them or simply be out of range. And that's what I recommend. If you see a fury attack, you don't understand or know the combo, how long or the timing of it for a perfect guard, just sprint away and completely avoid it, then come back in with a running attack 
easy. One final thing that I want to mention is to do with your combo attacks. As you use your light or heavies, you see how it drains the stamina, and before long, you're totally out and you can't do another attack, leaving you exposed or without enough stamina to evade or something like that. Something that I noticed is that your arm, the Legion arm, doesn't actually consume stamina. So if I put myself all the way to zero stamina, can't do another attack, I can still use my Legion arm because it doesn't consume stamina. It has its own gauge, right? The Legion gauge. And that's not tied to stamina for whatever reason, which means you can weave in attacks and combos with your Legion arm without really any downside other than its own gauge. In the case of this Legion arm in specific then, it actually interrupts humanoids, which can be a great way to combo enemies, dealing a normal attack and then before they can retaliate hitting them with the arm which then holds them in place pulls them to you for another punish combos of this nature are incredibly strong and that's why your arm is so good kind of bypassing the normal mechanics of a fight but there you have it that's my set of things the game doesn't seem to properly explain or even tell you should hopefully be helpful in your own gameplay if you guys have any other tips that might help someone be sure to drop it in the comments for now though i've been hollow you've been you thank you for watching we'll see you next time Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye